Hi there, my name is Sarah, and I'm here to show you step by step just how simple and easy it is to become a life saving blood donor. Donating blood is one of the most heroic and selfless acts you can do to support your community. So thank you for your willingness to become a life-saving blood donor to someone who so desperately needs it. No one ever wants to be in a position of needing blood, but the fact is one in four of us will need a blood transfusion in our lifetime. Just whose life is touched by blood donation? Patients undergoing surgeries and cancer treatments, premature babies and their mothers, and victims of trauma, like a car accident, all need blood to survive. This is Hannah. She was born with a congenital heart defect and needed a heart transplant to survive. Fortunately, at just 11 days old, Hannah's family received word that a matching heart had been found. She immediately underwent surgery. Her surgery and recovery required the blood in her body be replaced more than twice. Thanks to a new heart and blood donations from dozens of volunteer blood donors, Hannah not only survived the surgery, but is now attending college and living an active, healthy life. This is but one of the many lives that have been forever changed by volunteer blood donations. Isn't it a great feeling to know that you have the power to have that kind of impact on someone's life? At Livestream, we know this to be true because we see it every day. But I'm sure you have some questions. What is blood donation exactly? Is it safe? Does it hurt? How will it make me feel? Allow me to answer these questions and dispel a few myths. What is blood donation? Blood donation is when you give your blood to another. Your blood is collected from a vein in your arm and transferred into a bag specially designed to store blood. Is blood donation safe? Blood donation is very safe. You cannot contract AIDS or any other disease by donating blood. The materials used during your donation are new, sterile, disposable, and only used one time for your blood donation. Does it hurt? In order to donate blood, a needle must be inserted into a vein in your arm so blood can flow into the bag. At the time of the needle stick, you will feel only a minor pinch. How long will blood donation take? The entire process takes about an hour and includes sign-in, registration and screening, and post-donation refreshments. The donation itself only takes about six to eight minutes. How will you feel after the donation? Most people feel great knowing they've helped save a life. Some people do feel sluggish or slightly weak immediately after donation. This can happen for a number of reasons. In a few moments, I will review how to best prepare for a successful donation. How often can you donate? Your standard blood donation, a whole blood donation, can be done every 56 days. So who can donate blood? To donate blood, there are a couple of general requirements all donors must meet first. You must be at least 15 years old, weigh 110 pounds, and be in general good health. If you are 15, 16, or 17 years old, you will need a parental consent form to donate. Parental consent forms are available from your blood drive chair or committee and can also be found on Livestream's website, www.lstream.org. If you meet these basic requirements, prepare to be a lifesaver. The first thing you need to do is sign up or make an appointment. If you're doing this at your high school, you can do this through your chairperson or committee. Your school's blood drive flyer will tell you exactly where to go to sign up. If you're not donating at your high school blood drive, you can make an appointment at any Livestream location by going online to www.lstream.org or you can call us at 1-800-879-4484. In the days before your scheduled donation, the best way to ensure that you have a successful donation is to follow three simple tips. Eat up, drink up, and get your blood moving. Tip one, eat up. Have you ever heard the term, you are what you eat? Well, when it comes to your blood, it's true. Remember that cheeseburger and fries you had the other day, or the donut you had at breakfast? Well, you may not feel different now, but your blood certainly is. All that stuff, the fat, oil, and sugar from your food goes directly into your bloodstream, affecting how healthy your blood really is. So remember, the healthier your diet, the healthier your blood. It's important the days leading up to your donation to remember to include some healthy stuff as well. So what is that good stuff? Combining foods rich in iron and vitamin C will boost your body's strength. Strength you can give to a patient who needs it. So think green veggies and citrus fruits. 
Believe it or not, a healthy amount of salty snacks can also help make your next donation a more positive experience. Pretzels, anyone? Think of blood donation as a normal part of your day. Don't skip or add meals to your everyday routine. Just be sure to add in those healthy snacks and cut down on the fatty and sugary foods. Tip number two, drink up. Your blood is 55% water, which makes hydration a crucial part of blood donation. In the few days before and after your donation, increase the amount of water you drink. The more water you drink, the easier your blood moves through your body and the quicker you replace the pint you gave. Tip three, get your blood moving. When you arrive for your donation, get your blood moving by trying some simple flexing and tension exercises. No, we don't have to go to the mat for these. These can be done with minimal effort at your chair. Simply tighten and relax the major muscles of your body to get your blood moving. Here's a few exercises you can try. Start by bending your ankles backward and forward. Then flex or tense the muscles in your thighs and legs for just a few seconds and relax. Do the same with your stomach or core, tighten and relax. Make a fist with both your hands, squeeze tight, then release. And lastly, gently roll your shoulders. You can do these while you're waiting to donate and during your donation too. When your blood is moving, it flows smoothly and quickly and that helps ensure a successful donation. Remember that success is for you and the patients you're helping. Well, the day is finally here. It's donation day. You planned and prepared and now it's your time to be a hero. For many of you, this may be your very first time donating, but don't worry, here at Livestream, our staff are trying to help you every step of the way. Feel free to ask us any questions you may have about your donation or the process. After all, we're here to help you save a life. Though every blood drive is laid out a little differently, the process to becoming a life-saving blood donor is the same. The first step is to register, then screening, followed by your donation, and lastly, canteen. Step one, registration. Once you arrive to your donation site, the first step is to register. During registration, you'll be asked your name and contact information, such as your mailing address, phone number, and email address. All of this information is stored in our secure and confidential system for future contact and notification purposes. And you will also be asked for a photo ID with proof of age. This can be a driver's license, a California ID, or even a school ID if it includes a photo and date of birth. And if you're 17 years old or younger, you will be asked for your signed parental consent form to donate. And step one, registration is done. Step two, screening. Screening is done privately and sometimes, depending on the drive, is combined with registration. During screening, you'll be asked questions about travel, health, and medications you may be taking. We'll also take your temperature, pulse, blood pressure, and measure your hemoglobin level to make sure it is safe for you to give blood today. The hemoglobin test is done by a prick of the finger. To make the test a little easier, get your hands warm by simply rubbing them together. A hemoglobin test is critical to your blood donation because it measures the amount of red blood cells in your body and ensures you have enough to donate today. Now we're on to step three, your donation. If you haven't started already, now is a great time to begin your exercises while you're waiting for your donation to begin. Remember, tighten your muscles, relax and repeat. Gently roll your shoulders, flex your ankles and legs. Once your donation has started, be careful not to move your arm. Stick with tensing your legs and flexing your ankles. The donation takes only a few minutes and before you know it, you're done. Your Livestream donor specialist will complete your paperwork, wrap your arm in a bandage, give you some helpful instructions, and hand you your donor receipt. Your receipt has some great information on it, including the rewards Livestream offers our blood donors and who to contact if you have questions or concerns after your donation. Congratulations, you did it. You're officially a life-saving blood donor. You should be proud of the selfless donation you just made. And finally, step four, the canteen. The canteen is where you will sit for the next 15 minutes. You'll be offered water, juice, and a variety of snacks. Take your pick. This is your time to sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. Now you may think the journey of your blood donation stops there, but the fact is it's only begun. First, your donation is transported to Livestream's laboratory where samples of your blood are sent out for testing. To make sure your blood can save a life soon, testing is completed within 24 hours of your donation. This is the last of the blood that I'm bringing back. That's cool. 
It's a life saving day today. Welcome to Livestream's laboratory. Your donation is transported here where samples of your blood are prepared and sent for testing. While your blood is being tested, Livestream's laboratory staff is busy preparing the pint you gave. Your donation is separated into components, labeled, and stored for distribution. You may not know this, but your blood is made up of three key components, red cell, platelets, and plasma. Each is critical to the human body, and each have their own way to help it heal. Your red blood cells are, you guessed it, the red part of your blood. Red cells carry oxygen throughout the body and may be given to hospital patients who have experienced a loss of blood due to surgery or a car accident, or a patient who may be anemic and not have enough red cells of their own. Platelets are yellow in color and are the clotting agents in our blood. When we are cut, platelets rush to the rescue to help minimize bleeding. Without enough platelets, a minor cut could become life-threatening. Patients being treated for blood diseases, including cancer, often need frequent platelet transfusions as treatment since the disease can damage their platelets. Plasma makes up more than one half of our total blood volume. Plasma is a yellowish fluid that is mostly water, but also contains proteins and many other important ingredients the body needs. Like platelets, plasma's most important job is to help stop bleeding. Plasma is critical for accident and burn victims who need help stabilizing and recovering from injuries. Labeling of your donation is simple enough. The label identifies the donor's blood type, and if the donation was split into multiple components, the label identifies the component or product type. Though this process is fairly simple, it is crucial to ensure the right product goes to the right patient. Each blood component has its own temperature and time restrictions. Livestream has a specialized team in place to oversee and monitor the storage and distribution of each component. Since each component is different, this is a critical part of your donation's journey. Red blood cells are sorted by blood type and stored in a temperature-controlled refrigerator and must be transfused within 42 days of donation. Platelets are more demanding. They must be stored at room temperature and continuously moving. They are kept in a special storage cabinet that shakes them constantly so they never have a chance to settle. Platelets also have a very short shelf life and have to be transfused within five days of being collected. Plasma is the least demanding of the three. Plasma is typically frozen and can be stored for up to a year. However, as a result of the high demand for plasma, it doesn't stay stored for long. On average, Livestream supplies 500 units of blood a day to local hospitals. Every day of the year, those hospitals make numerous requests for blood products that are desperately needed to save the lives of patients in our community. Livestream's delivery team makes sure every request is met on time and the needs of every patient is fulfilled. Deliveries are made all over Southern California, from LA to Blythe, from Barstow to Temecula, and everywhere in between. So there you have it, the journey of your blood donation. In the end, it's the patients in the hospitals who receive your donation and whose lives were saved that matter the most. They may never know who you are, but you can be assured they will never forget the gift you have given them.